welcome my dear students of 8A and 8B to my history class. Today's uh, lesson, the American War of Independence. The American War of Independence. The same lesson, in your previous lesson was Industrial Revolution and Imperialism. And next lesson already I have started teaching. Today, the same lesson, continuation of the same lesson. Topic, the American War of Independence. And here are some points mentioned in the chart. Please look at it. Some point, imposition of taxes, imposition of new taxes. Second point, beginning of the revolution. Third point, uh, third point, sorry. First point, imposition of new taxes. Second point, influence of the European thinkers. Third point, beginning of the revolution. And fourth point, Boston Tea Party. Fifth point, no taxes without representation. First point, imposition of new taxes. You know, the British during the Seven Years' War in Europe suffered huge financial burden. Due to that Seven Years' War between Britain and France, Britain needed huge amount of money and wealth. But when the Seven Years' War was going on between Britain and France. Britain decided to realize, to make up its financial uh, loss at the cost of America. Since the America had become their colonies, since they had established their colonies over America, now they decided to make up their financial burden at the cost of the American colonies. That's why the British government in America imposed many taxes on the Americans. A number of taxes were imposed on them. But at the time when they were imposing a number of taxes on the Americans, many Americans were forced to pay it. But the situation beyond control when the British impose taxes on the British impose taxes on sugar. The British Parliament passed the Sugar Act in the year 1764 and imposed tax on sugar imports which affected the local traders as they could not buy sugar at cheap rates. As soon as taxes were imposed on sugar, local businessmen, local traders were unable to purchase sugar at a very cheap rate because rates were increased. Besides, another act next year in 1965, the British government passed that was Stamp Act. They declared that affixation of tax stamps, they declared that a fixation of revenue stamps on all legal documents, all legal, do legal documents was mandatory, means compulsory. But American people did not want to uh, purchase, you know, stamp. Because stamp is one kind of stamp, under stamp, newly introduced stamp act, the British Traders, British businessmen were uh, bound to purchase uh, stamps as revenues for affixation on each and every legal documents. But the Americans did not, the Americans raised zero price by saying it that they were Americans, the Britishers were the outsiders, they had established their colonies over their own country. Then how, how they could impose taxes on them? Stamp Act was not for the Americans since that country belonged to their own country. So why should they pay, uh, why should they pay, uh, spend money in uh, purchasing a stamp? Very well, very sad. They would never be, they, they did not want to accept that unjust tax, unjust law. That's why. 
They raised one slogan, they coined one slogan, no taxation without representation. No taxation without representation. But in fact, the British from the very, very beginning was decided to tackle the entire situation forcefully because they knew that that matter was going to be a matter of sentiment for the American people. It might harm the sentiments of the Americans, American people since the Americans had no representative in the British Parliament. The British Parliament was a, was a place where anyone could raise hue and cry against any unparliamentary word, any uh, unauthorized word, any illegal word, any illegal act. But in the British Parliament, there was no American representative who could protest against the unjust law passed by the British government. That's why the American, in a normal way, raised uh, that very question that they would pay taxes only when the British government would appoint one representative in the British Parliament from the Americans. But the British did not allow any one American representative to be the member of the British Parliament against that system. The British did not want to allow any Americans to criticize the works of the British government there. That's why the British decided to teach Americans, to teach Americans forcefully by showing their financial, by showing their military power, military action. That's why the Americans also uh, protest against that system by by refusing all kinds of taxes against them. But the Britishers were determined to impose taxes one after one. As soon as the British the Americans refused to pay, refused to accept Stamp Act, Revenue uh, Stamp Revenue Act, and you know uh, Sugar Act, the British grew offended and became very much arrogant. Uh, uh, towards the Americans and decided to impose a number of taxes on them. After the after after 1767, the British Parliament passed a number of taxes like the Revenue Act, the Commissioners of Customs Act, the Indemnity Act, and the New York Restraining Act. These these acts were uh, you know passed in the British Parliament. And these acts were together known as the Townsend Acts, which were tax, which were taxes imposed on. These were under these Townsend Acts, a number of taxes were imposed on a number of goods, for example, tea, paper, glass, paint, etc. etc. The purpose of imposing taxes was to raise revenue from the American colonies. These, these tax, these tax laws met with huge resistance from all the colonists. The British troops had to be brought to Boston to avert an uprising. The British government realized that the American colonists were going to organize a revolt against the British government, and there, uh, there might be an uprising against the Townsend Acts, which were passed in the British Parliament against the will of the Americans. That's why the British government decided to brought a number of uh, you know, soldiers in uh, America so that they must uh, uh, fight against the Americans and must suppress their agitation, their uprisings. Now, Next point, influence, influence on the American philosophers. Influence on the American philosophers. 
a number of American philosophers influenced the America. A number of American philosophers influenced the colonists. Why and why and how? The American, colon, the American thinkers, the American philosophers started writing articles one after one in order to motivate the revolutionary ideals and thinkings of the Americans against the British government. The American revolutionaries were influenced. As a result of it, the American revolutionaries were influenced by the ideals and ideas of the modern thinkers, modern European philosophers like John Locke, Thomas Paine, John Milton, who inspired them a lot to fight against the colonial oppression, colonial rule to obtain liberty and freedom. Thomas Jefferson, Another thinker of America stated that the American people had the right to revolt against an unjust government which was established forcefully in America against the will of the Americans. Thomas Paine guided people through his articles on overthrowing the British colonial government. European philosophers and thinkers influenced the Americans to fight against British rule. Initially, the Americans were, you know, Americans were insulted from time to time by the British government. They thought that they were alone fighting against the oppression of the British. But as soon as they came to know that the European thinkers like, you know, Thomas uh, John Milton, Thomas Pine, John Locke, Thomas Jefferson, they all were with them. They were backing them by writing one after one, one by writing one after one article against the oppressive rule of the British, against the oppression of the British, against the, you know, colonial, uh, colonial influence of the British. That's why that act of misery immediately should be stopped in America and they must get back their own country to the Americans. Otherwise, the Americans will challenge their authority, the Americans will show, will, uh, raise souls against the British. And ultimately, under such circumstances, the American revolutionaries organize a number of secret societies, secret groups, so that they can they could fight against the British. Then one incident took place that was Boston Tea Party. Another incident might just be Boston Tea Party. Boston Tea Party and last one, no taxation represent already I have taught you, no taxation without representation. Now last point, Boston Tea Party. What is Boston Tea Party? You know, under the previous system, the British allowed only British East India Company to monopolize their tea trade in America. So a number of large, large ships would come from India, loaded with Indian teas, and supplied it to the large market of America. No local American traders had any right to take part in to take part there as a trader and to earn money with along with the East India Company. Only East India Company had the right to supply uh, containers of tea to all parts of America and through the sub dealers of America, the local merchants, the local traders would purchase it. So it would cost much. That's why the amount of money, whatever they could earn by making it a supply or by purchasing it directly from India or directly from other agents, not through East India Company, they would be they would become more and more benefited. So in order to make them benefited, the American revolutionaries joined the local traders, local people, businessmen, they all strongly supported 
the stamps of the American revolutionaries, the amount of money, whatever they could, uh, the, they, they could earn from there. Now they decided to invest there. Now they decided to spend money for the American revolutionaries. So there's a number of secret social association, secret societies could be established by the American revolutionaries in order to uh, start armed rebellion against the British government in America, in order to uh, abolish the British colonial rule from America. That's why the local traders also decided to uh, support uh, and decided to uh, support financially, politically, socially to the American revolutionaries. And ultimately what happened? One large ship uh, just uh, reached Boston Tea, Boston Tea uh, you know, Boston Port. Boston actually was a port of America. One large ship raided with a, a, a huge quantities of, uh, you know, a tea, huge containers of tea uh, reached a uh, postal port at midnight and it was supposed to be uh, you know uh, overloaded it was supposed to be unloaded already it was loaded but it was supposed to be unloaded but uh, during midnight a number of american revolutionaries raided the large ship and started uh, you know throwing and a number of tea containers into the sea water in protest against the oppression done to them, in protest against the inequality established in America and uh, differentiated between the British and the Americans. The Britishers were benefited with that system, the Americans were deprived of that system. That's why American revolutionaries, you know, on 16th December 1773, they, uh, you know, uh, they destroyed the tea by throwing the continents into the sea water. And this incident was an open challenge, open protest against the new taxes included the tax on tea imposed on the uh, colonies. This event became famous as Boston Tea Party incident. Boston Tea Party incident, a group of colonies raided British ships. A group of American colonists raided the British ships, loaded with taxed tea in Boston Harbor and destroyed, destroyed all the tea containers by throwing it in the sea water during midnight. Then what, what was the result of it? The British government indefinitely declared Boston Harbor as an illegal, as an illegal harbor and closed Boston, Boston port for uh, independently as well, Boston Tea Porters and closed the Boston Tea Port uh, indefinitely. That's why, my dear students, that incident, Boston Tea Party marked the beginning of a new era in the history of America. The British government never thought that the American colonists would uh, uh, protest in such a way they would have to face huge financial loss. That's why the British government grew offended and declared the Boston Harbor to be closed until a solution could be found out. Up to this, my dear students, next day, the remaining part, intolerable act and it was an, again an intolerable act and its a consequence and the British reaction and the role of Americans they played while uh, fighting against the, the British soldiers. What was the result of, of the battle between 
the British and American soldiers uh, who uh, led the battle against uh, the British each and every point. Next day, I shall follow this discussion. So, follow you by after using my just